this video we are going to change the way that we are interacting with our enemy after it's dead and the reason we're changing it is because we need to change the way of interacting so that we can use it on the same method on our chest and bank slots and later our quest givers and stuff so we just need to change the fact that we can do like this we can kill the enemy like so and when we kill him we can actually loot him from like all distances he's dead there I can right click over here and loot him, that doesn't make sense, right? So we need to do something about that. What we need to do is to go to our script folder and we can find, let's say, UI related and create a new script. And this script is an interface, so it's going to be called iInteractable. I hope I spelled that correct. So this script is going to be um, implemented, or this interface is going to be implemented on all things that we can interact with. So let's say we have a quiz, quiz giver. He will just implement this um, uh, interface and then we can interact with him and get a quest or something. So we need to set it up like this, change it to an interface. And we need two functions, one called interact and another one called stop interact. So these two functions are used on all things we can interact with. So in our case, our enemy is going to implement this interface so that we can interact and stop interacting when we walk away from him. So let's see, yeah, we have our enemy right there, but in general, the enemy is also an NPC. So we can also go to the NPC and say, well, the NPC is a character. Well, the NPC is the top level of stuff that we would like to interact with. So we can just make a comma here and say he is I interactable. This will give you a, a, an error here saying that you are not implementing I in stop interact. So we already have an interact function right here and that's fine so it doesn't complain about that but we need to stop interact. So right click, quick actions, implement interface. So now we have an interact and stop interact. So both these are going to be different. So we can just make this virtual for now so we can go to our enemy because our enemy in here is from npc he will also have these two functions so we can actually go down here and see if we already ha has interact and we need to override stop interact and we don't need to call base right now maybe we need to do that later but for now we don't okay so this interact is actually fine for now however we need to at the stop interact functionality. Um, I'm not sure if we should just write it now. Let's just do it already. Um, what do we need to do when we stop interacting? We need to hide the loot window. So we need to say loot window dot my instance dot close. We already have that functionality. So when we stop interacting with the enemy, we need to hide the loot window. Okay. So that's why we need to implement a specific version of this function in each um, type of class. So if we have a quest giver, it will hide the quest window instead of the loot window. It wouldn't make sense to hide the loot window if we are using a quest giver. Okay. So now that this is written, we can go to our player. So we need to change something here. Let's see if we can find it. It's under um, character related and our player. So our player needs something, a reference to something called I interactable. Let's make a private uh, I interactable variable here. Let's just call it interactable. So this is going to be a reference to the thing that he can interact with. So we can use this interface to call the interact function on our enemy, on our chests, on our banks, on our quest givers and everything. This is why we're creating this. So right down here, uh, let's see if I can even find it. Uh, we have something in the player somewhere. Uh, or it's in the game manager actually. Sorry, I, there's so much code now. So let's see, we have something here maybe. Yeah, it's actually right here. So right now, this is how we do it, right? We are have the click target function. When we click on a target, we check if it's an enemy. If it's an enemy, then we use the hit collider get component NPC interact. We don't want to do this because then we need to specify this line of code for each thing we click. Um, we don't want to get the NPC component because our chest is not an NPC. So this is not going to work. And then we need to make an elf, st elf statement and everything. So we can make this way easier. We can actually go to our player. We can make an interact function, a public interact function. Let's 
hope you interact with capital I. Which of course means return nothing. So this interact function is going to be called on the player. So this will open up the loot window. So we'll get to that in a second. Let's see on the game manager. So right here, instead of doing all this, we can do like this player dot interact. So if we hit an enemy with the click, we can use the player interact function. So this is still the same, but now this is going to work no matter what we interact with. Because in our player, we will write two functions or three. We have the interact function, we'll get back to that in a second. We make an onTrigger into 2D function. So if the collision we are colliding with, if the tag is an enemy, then we say interactable is equal to collision that get component i interactable. So if we collide with an enemy and it's an enemy tag, then we say it's interactable. Okay, so now we can set the interactable. We also need to be able to remove it again, so we can make, copy this one, and rename it to exit instead. And if we are, if the collision we are stopping to inter um, collide with is an enemy, then we say interactable is null. And we call interactable stop interact right there. So in, in the chest case, it will close the chest. In the enemy case, it will stop showing the loot window. And we also need to make sure that I'm, our interactable isn't null. So that we don't get any null reference exceptions because this might happen a couple of times. We run out of something. Uh, our collider might change, so it goes in and out or something. So just to make sure we don't get any null references, we just check if we are null before we do all this. It doesn't uh, hurt to do that. So that's the exit, that's the enter. So the idea is that this interactable variable we created here is going to be set and we're going to use that to interact with the enemy because the interactable variable here is going to have reference to the enemy we are colliding with after we do these two things. So with that done, we can go to interact. It's a very simple function. We just say if interactable isn't null. So if we have something to interact with, then we say interactable dot interact so this will call the given interact function in our case an enemy's interact function so we'll do like all this if it was a chest it will just do something else let's try to save let's test that this works so if we take a fireball or something and kill this so now the enemy is dead if we can try to right click nothing happens here if I go all the way to him, now I should be colliding with him. I can right click and show the loot window. I can loot something and if I go away, it hides the loot window. If I go back close enough, I can get this back. Okay. So now I can only loot enemies I'm close enough to and that I am interacting with. I get it that later we will have to do something. Let's say we kill more enemies on top of each other. Well, when we have looted an enemy, we should be able to, when we do like this, he shouldn't be intractable anymore, I think, uh, so that we can loot the next enemy without any problems. So we will also look at that later when we get more enemies, but for now, this is uh, this this works fine, I think. Yeah. Okay, so that's what I want to do in this video. In the next one, I am going to add a chest um, so that we can interact with it, and then we are going to create some bank storage, of course. So thank you very much for watching. Thanks for watching my video. Please remember that Inscope Studios is a community founded page, so please consider clicking the support link on the screen to see how you can support me and get something back in return.